Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be showing you some uh, quick tips when using the FMS for the purposes of GPS navigation on the Lovely 747 here. Now originally what I was hoping to do is also spend some time uh, basically talking about, you know, how to switch over to VOR mode and do automatic VOR navigation, but the reality is that's simply not a thing after the recent update thanks to the avionics change, and I'll talk about that once we get going. So let's go ahead and climb in this aircraft. And now one of the questions people were asking is we're having a really, really tough time getting lateral navigation to work on this aircraft. Now for this particular setup, I basically loaded in a destination and off we go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip my head down here and we're gonna kind of see what's going on so you can kind of understand how we can tweak it. So let me zoom way, way out here. And now you can see my waypoint here is gonna be taking me over to Hartford VOR and then it's gonna be going direct JFK. The other thing we can see is if you look up here in the upper right is the fact that we have HFD in magenta, meaning it is selected. So right now my current flight plan, even though it's terminus is JFK, has no way to get there. As a matter of fact, if I were to run this route, we'd get to Hartford and the aircraft would have no idea what to do. We'd basically just start flying this way because it has no idea how to get to its next position. And that's usually part of what happens when you're actually planning your actual route itself. So let's see if we can fix that. So I'm gonna come down here real fast. I'm gonna press my legs button. And you're gonna notice the only leg or waypoint that we have selected here is HFD, which I said is the VOR station down there in Hartford. Now, the interesting thing here is it knows we are actually going to JFK. You know, if I were to actually go back to my original page here to root, you'll notice JFK is the destination. The problem is this aircraft requires knowledge on how to get all the way down onto the ground. Otherwise, it's not gonna care for you very much. So let's do that. So what I'm gonna do is press DEP R and you'll notice that it gives me BAF. I don't want BAF. So I'm gonna press DEP R again. Now notice it brings me to the index page, including JFK arrival. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this button here and here's all of our runways. Since the uh, wind is basically coming out of the west today, oh, we'll pick a 22 left, which is easy enough. It's gonna ask us, uh, would you like any of these transitions? I'd say, oh heck yeah, I'll give me that one right there. And you'll notice we have a little preview of that actually down here on our map. So I'm gonna say, I like that. So I'm gonna press enter. And now notice our flight plan is still destroyed. Um, we're gonna to get to Hartford and it's gonna fly straight until we run out of gas. Uh, the reason being is we have what they call a discontinuity. That's to say that our system does not know how to get from here to here. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back up to our legs here and you'll notice there's our discontinuity. I'm simply gonna select the little soft key next to Deer Park here, DPK, and click right here. And now you can see we've suggested a way for it to get from Hartford over to Deer Park. And you can see we've got this nice little dashed line that indicates that there. So I'm gonna press the enter key and all set. So now if we were to fly this flight, it'll take us all the way down, well, mostly all the way down over to uh, JFK here because we have now gone ahead and did it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get us a uh, nice up in the air here. And uh, the reason I'm doing that is uh, so I can show you how we can go ahead and move on to the next phase, which is basically going to be uh, getting ready for selecting a waypoint after we've already gotten ourselves up in the air here. Now, normally we do this with a Togo, but eh, I feel like moving pretty quick today. So I'm gonna move pretty quick today. Now, to one of the questions that I mentioned earlier is that people were asking, how is it that you can uh, go ahead and do manual VOR or automatic VOR tracking? And after the last avionics update number two, that's actually no longer a possibility. This is simply we can't do. I know I've done a lot of fun things. I actually used an external tool for an automatic pilot for the an effort to try to find a way to sort of get around some of these uh, shenanigans. But I actually found that it simply is not something that can be done anymore. Go ahead and flip that on. No, we don't need that right now. Ah, there we go. Go ahead and get ourselves a little bit of altitude and we'll start making our way directly towards it. Um, that being said, it is still possible to go ahead and uh, do quite a bit of stuff with the actual uh, VOR navigation itself. And uh, what I mean by that is if we were to actually go down here to the navigational radio page, you see how this uh, VOR is selected? I can actually manually come in here and dial in a VOR. And when I have done that, what it'll actually do is it will display what its position is with these little arrows across the top. The other thing it will do is is it'll give us the DME information that you have over here to those particular VORs. You'll also notice that that VOR itself will get highlighted. So for those of you who are trying to proceed direct over a specific VOR, it's actually not that bad because um, we can actually zoom and see where it is on the screen, even though we can't do it. Now, some people are like, just smack the VOR button. Told you. <laughs> this aircraft is now completely dependent on the FMS for the purposes of navigation. Now, if you want to, you can grab your hotkeys and start fitzing around a little bit, trying to get uh, everything to change navigational source. It's not worth it. It's just not going to work. But that's kind of a bummer, not kind of a bummer. But anyway, let's go back to what we were saying before. So uh, one of the questions was asked is, um, how do we change where we're going? Um, what if they call us up and they say they want us to proceed direct to a Norwich VOR, for example, here? I would say, oh, no problem. 
So the first thing you always want to do whenever you're changing waypoints on an aircraft that moves like this one does, is you probably want to take a couple moments to go ahead and make sure the aircraft is on its present holding and it stays there holding, I'm in heading. So I'm going to press the heading hold mode. I'm going to come down here, I'm going to type in the command for the next waypoint that we want. Notice we have no direct button on this one, that's the other ones. ORW is where we want to go. I'm going to click this as the top. Now notice the computer will automatically generate a little image of this. Is this what you wanted to do? Yeah, that's what I want. Execute. Now what we have to do is we have to tell the system now we want to go there. To do that, I'm going to go back here and press LNAV. And you can see just like that, our aircraft executes a nice gentle point. <laughs> that was not gentle. A nice gentle, finger quotes, bank uh, towards a Norwich VOR here, which is not going to be over yonder. And we now have ourselves that next position ready to rock. Now let's say they uh, call us back up and say, just kidding, we actually wanted you to proceed direct Hartford. We're going to do the exact same thing. We're simply going to hold. We're going to come down here, select Hartford, select it over the top of that. It's going to say, is that what you meant? I'm going to say, okie doke. I'm going to go back over here, tap the LNAV button, and the stewardess is going to start rolling to the other side. Actually, you're not, because you're a good pilot, and you take your time to coordinate them with the rudder and everything, so nobody's going to go flying anywhere. They will feel the nice little tug in their seat as that happens. So you can see how that is just a quick and easy way to go ahead and override it. Now, one of the most fascinating things about most FMS-driven aircraft is we have the ability to actually edit things immediately. So we're not in Hartford yet. And uh, let's say they call us up and uh, they want us to do something slightly different. They actually want us to proceed direct to uh, Delta 283 Mike here. Okay, we can do that. And then we can do that a couple different ways. We can actually grab that waypoint and shove it right onto Deer Park here, uh, in which case you can see that's the new one. Or we can do something even scandalouser. Scandalouser. By the way, press erase if you make a mistake. We can actually sit here, do one of these awful things. Ah, oh, why would you do that? But notice we've deleted Delta Park, so we have to actually fix it. So like I said, it's a better way to do it. So if I press execute now, notice the aircraft is going to proceed direct, and basically we're going to be landing straight down on there. And yeah, I can hear my little alarm going off, letting me know, hey, you're about to get to that particular point. Now, of course, um, we get close to Hartford, and they call us back and say, no, that's not what I meant. Oh my gosh, guys, get your stuff together, man. Get your stuff together. Because now I can come back here, I can select my transition, I can go back to the one that I want, Deer Park, and press Execute, and you'll see that it will auto-correct it. It's going to take a minute, but of course, it can't auto-correct it, because look what happened! It created a discontinuity, and again, that's the number one cause of uh, people having issues with LNAV, is because of those discontinuities that happen when you make changes like that. So as you can see, it's uh, relatively straightforward to get the aircraft to go where we want it. At any point, of course, uh, we can just jump in, grab the controls, and uh, do our own little thing. And, you know, it doesn't require it. Now, let's say we did want to follow a VOR. You know, I'm really, really interested. I want to be able to go in this general direction. You know, is there any way that we can uh, kind of get that way? And uh, the reality is you're going to have to do it manually. Uh, the nice thing, though, which I actually find kind of helpful, is if you grab onto our little heading bug here and you start cranking it around. So, I mean, it's going to take a lifetime to get this heading bug all the way around. One of the things it will do is it'll generate this lovely little magenta dash line, which you can see in the lower left corner of the screen right now. And all I have to do is put that over the VOR that I want to travel to. Then if I press on select mode, the whole aircraft will take ourselves a nice big old left turn. My stewardess is so angry at me right now. And um, we're just going to go fly directly towards that particular location. Now, one of the things that's so great is even if we have a really, really bad wind, it's going to be very clear what we need to do to adjust the direction of the airplane for the purposes of crossing that particular VOR station. Now, of course, they call us back and say, go back to lateral or go direct Harford. It's like, ah, <laughs> and we go right back. But that's basically going to be the simplest method. Now, one of the cool things, too, is if you're using ADF navigation for some reason, you can actually come up here and flip that mode on. There are no NTBs close to us. We'd have to go way, way out this way to get to an NDB, but it'll actually appear on this screen as well, and you can use the exact same technique for the purposes of lining yourself up with that particular item. Other than that, enjoy.